Okay, let's do some observations. So, a bit of context. I am an airline pilot, and in the course of my job, I see the curve of the Earth all the time. And it's really easy to see if you know what to look for. So today, I'm just going to do a quick video because I've collected some images and some videos. It's a lot of videos, honestly, um, that show the curve of the Earth. And I'm going to demonstrate how they do that. Um, and these are the observations that you can do a lot of places. Some of them you can only do it in air. And honestly, a lot of them, uh, like this one, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find this sort of situation when you're not a pilot, because this doesn't happen when you're looking at the side of the airplane. Um, it can. You just have to be very observant, and you get no warning when it, when it would happen, and you'd get about 20 seconds with which to observe it, whereas this happens to us pretty frequently. Um, unless we're not, we're not talking about this. Uh, we're, we're not even going to look at these contrail videos, even though they do show what I'm talking about, because I have a much better example of what I'm talking about. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about some of the tools I'm going to use. So I have two GeoGebra little uh, things right here. So this is a model of the flat Earth. Here we have the Earth. Um, and this is going to help me model uh, location and perspective for any point on the Earth. So here we have object and plane, um, lat long, and coordinate style. And when, by adjusting these sliders, you can adjust where an object is anywhere on the plane, right? Uh, so we could put the object on uh, latitude 0, longitude 0, right? And now the object is down here on the equator, uh, halfway between the North Pole and the rim of the Earth. Um, on the prime meridian. The prime meridian is this line right here. In fact, let me let me let me make a big bold prime meridian line. Let's do that. I'm shaking. Why am I shaking so badly? This is actually this is this is abnormal. I do not like this. It's okay. We'll deal with it. Okay? So I have object and I have plane. Um, plane being me, right? Uh, Doopity-doopity-doo. Um, and this is in uh, lat long coordinates. Um, for reference, everything on this chart is in scale to kilometers. Uh, I have made the radius of the Earth be 20,000 kilometers. And the reason I have done that is because originally a kilometer was defined as the distance from the North Pole to the South, which in this case is from the North Pole to the edge of the Earth, as passes through Paris divided by 20,000. Um, which is why, if you look at, let me do this. I don't know why Discord was open. Which is why, if you look at circumference of the Earth, say, we get an answer of 40,000 and a bit. Um, the and a bit is because people aren't perfect, and the Earth is not a perfect sphere. Um, but yeah, it's not a coincidence that it's almost exactly 40,000. It's because uh, it was defined that way. In fact, if you do uh, in nautical miles, you're going to get the same sort of thing. So let's actually, let's talk about nautical miles real quick. I love nautical miles. So nautical miles are, um, you take a degree, uh, we don't get a, we don't get a grid on Google Earth. Okay. So you take a degree of latitude divided by 60. That's a nautical mile. So there's 90 degrees between the equator and the North Pole. 90 times 60. So let's actually, let's do a quick, let's do a quick second tab. 90 times 60 times 4, right? So you should have 21,600 nautical miles is what the answer we should get, roughly. 
21,600 and a bit. See, it works. Um, and once again, the reason it's not exact is because it's, the Earth's not an exact sphere. Um, the, the, the equatorial circumference is a bit wider than the polar circumference, see? Um, and we know this. The Earth has no blade spirit. Anyway, beside the point, I'm basically just saying that that's the reason I chose 20,000. It's because back in ye olden days, uh, they decided that that's what a kilometer would be defined as. And I figured since that was before we had NASA, before we had space, before we had airplanes even, um, that like, so clearly this is before the conspiracy to hide the shape of the earth. Uh, that's how a kilometer was defined. So it makes sense that people back then knew the size of the earth, right? Anyway, beside the point, here's my model. So you have the plane and the object. I've, d I've taken the liberty of drawing the, the line through the plane and the object, right? From the edge of the earth to the edge of the earth. And that is what is, uh, that is what is, um, uh, let's, let's hide this for now real quick. Uh, actually, I don't want to hide it. Let's, let's turn it, let's turn it narrow. Why am I so shaky? There we go. Um, so we have the earth's surface. We don't need, we don't need this to be labeled. Let's, let's hide the label. Show label. Okay. Um, so this A prime and B prime is the length of this line from edge to edge. So it's basically the slice of the earth in the plane where I and the object we're observing are, um, and it stretches from edge to edge, right? I've just done the edge to edge for no reason, okay? We also have height, plane height is in feet, object height is in kilometers. It's stupid, I realize that, that's what I've made, don't worry about it, okay? I've also got this GeoGebra file. So this GeoGebra file is the round Earth. This is the best, well, it's not the best model. It's a model I've created. So it's just the Earth and the Sun to scale because we're going to do some solar observations too. We're going to do some solar observations in this, but I'm just going to use object for the Sun and we're going to deal with that when we get to it. So here we have the Earth and the Sun. The, Earth, the Sun is about... Uh, 150 million kilometers away. That's how big it is uh, to scale. Um, is that how big it is to scale? That seems a bit big, honestly. Let's let's do a quick check. Let's do a quick radius of the sun. Um, we have 695, 700 kilometers. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, 695, 700. Okay, that is that is the the that is the radius of the sun to scale. Uh, the, the sun is big. The sun is so big. Okay, it is just big. All right. And over here, uh, we have the Earth. Zooming way in, way in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the Earth, I've given the radius of the Earth as 6,371 kilometers. It's just the number that's stuck in my head. And it's roughly equal. And I know this is a perfect circle. And I just went on about how... The Earth isn't a perfect circle, but it's it's okay. Um, all right, so the Sun is exactly off here to the uh, X axis, so it's called the subsolar point. Um, and then here I have the plane distance. Um, so for the Sun observations, the Sun's going to be over here, and we're going to use plane distance, and we're going to be like somewhere over here. Uh, when we're talking about objects, we're going to use the object. So the object is always going to be right here at the top of the Earth. Um, and then we're going to be off to the side observing it. And we're going to see, we're going to see how observations with our eyes, we're going to, I mean, honestly, we're going to see how they match this model and not this model. Um, but to, to, to keep up the, the charade, I'm going to say we're going to just look at the observations and then decide for ourselves which model they fit the best, right? Um, so we'll start with the contrail, the contrail that I said we're not going to look at. So 
this happens a lot and you might be able to see first off why this might be a problem for the flat earth model so for flat earth one of the things that they say is that the horizon always rises to eye level um, which means that wherever you are however high you go the horizon is always eye level and this is just this is just wrong it is false um, up at cruising altitude the horizon is a significant distance below eye level so if you're at cruising altitude you're sitting there in the passenger seat um, actually this won't work if you're sitting right in the window seat right but if you hold out your arm at arm's length with your pinky uh, your pinky held horizontal and you put the bottom of your pinky on where you see the horizon the top of your pinky is what level is that is that is your horizontal roughly roughly speaking um, you can take a bottle of water with you if you drink half of a bottle of water and turn it on its side you can turn it into a little spirit level and if you look across the top of the water then you can see roughly where uh, level is and it's going to be above the horizon when you're at cruising altitude you can't see it when you're lower to the ground but it, when you're up at altitude it's very obvious so right here what we're looking at is the contrail of a plane um, in this case the plane was flying in the same direction as us um, and it was a thousand feet below us and as you can see the contrail rises above the horizon and that shouldn't happen um, if the horizon was eye level um, because the vanishing point for anything that's below you is going to go up to the, 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 the horizontal. It's going to go up to level. Um, and as you can see, the horizon does not go up to level. So we're actually going to look at a video of this. But first, before we look at a video, let's look at, um, let's look at what we would expect to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, we're going to do, we're going to do something. All right, let's put the object on longitude 90 and latitude 40. I don't, it doesn't matter. Actually, we'll put, uh, let's put it closer in 45, right? Uh, so we want this to also be 90. We want this to get closer, right? Um, so let's zoom in here. Um, okay, so let's make them a little bit closer. Ooh, excellent. I get excellent control over the, the latitude and longitude by using the arrow keys. This is good. This is good. It's like I planned for this or something, right? Okay, so here we have the airplane at 32,000 feet. Because I coded this poorly, let's do 31,000 feet in kilometers, right? So that's 9.449. So let's go back to our model. Let's make this 9.449, right? Um, can I also get, yes, let's do a grab some text because we're going to want the distance between subplane and sub object we're going to want that visible right here so this is in kilometers remember this is in kilometers right um and then what i want to do is is let's let's draw let's take a let's do more <coughs> excuse me so a parallel line up through the airplane, right? So this line T, we're gonna color this line, we're gonna style it, it's gonna be dashed instead of dotted. Uh, it's gonna be colored red, right? And this is plane level, right? So this is the level, this is the eye level of the airplane, which from the airplane's perspective, you can see as, you, as you're looking farther along, uh, it converges with the, the horizon of the plane of the planet. In fact, we can even we can even we can even uh, we can even do this. In instead of doing this, I'm going to get rid of this line. Actually, let's delete it. This line's dumb. I hate this line. We're going to make a better line. Um, we're going to make a line that goes from the airplane. Watch this. 
watch this, to the exact end of the Earth, right? In the direction we are facing. Okay? So we're not even going to fake it. This is... This is the vanishing point of the Earth as defined by the situation. Um, so we're going to call it plane level, right? Which, as, as previously mentioned, it should approximate the line parallel to the, the surface area. It's not exact, but it should approximate, right? Um, and now what I want to do is measure the angle between this dotted line and this line. No, why don't do that? It's angle between that dotted line and this dashed line. Oh, come on, stop doing that. Angle, dotted line, dashed line. Do we get that? Do we get an angle? We do get an angle, look at this. Okay, so this is the visual angle between the horizon and our object, and we have just put the object a thousand feet below us, right? Which is how it was, or it will be in our videos, right? So we're gonna keep the airplane here. I'm gonna move the object farther and away, right? And as it goes farther and, <coughs> excuse me, as it goes farther and farther away, we do get to a point where it is actually above the horizon line. That is because again, the horizon line is not exactly parallel to this flat plane anymore. Um, that happens when it's a thousand kilometers away, right? So if we bring, if we bring our object closer, we can actually get the exact point at which the, our object crosses the horizon line, right? It crosses at 783 kilometers, okay? Um, now for closer observations, Let's come, let's come this way. It's gonna come, let's cut it in, right? Because um, realistically, in fact, let's let's do some math. Realistically, it's really hard to f see planes that are more than like 15 nautical miles away uh, in kilometers. What is that in kilometers, right? So it's about 30 kilometers. So let's start our, nope, that's the wrong one. Let's start our observations down here at 30 kilometers, right? 30 kilometers, right? So already at 30 kilometers, we're looking at a angular difference uh, between the, the plane, the level, and the object is already half a degree, which if you didn't know, half of a degree is about the width of the full moon. Um, so it, it's significant. It is significantly below the horizon, right? And that only gets larger as the object comes closer, 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 and then zoop passes underneath it, right? So that's what it should look like in the flat Earth. Now let's go to the round Earth and take a pokesies, right? Um, so we're going to put our object height at 32, or plane height at 32, object height at 31. Uh, we're going to bring these closer together. Again, we're going to start at 30. 30 miles, or 30 kilometers. Okay, 30 kilometers, right? Now, we're gonna need some lines. So I want a tangent line. Oh boy, let's see if tangents work. It's gonna be a tangent line from there, do. Okay, um, so we have one more than we need. Let's 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 not show this one. Good. So we're gonna take this line. We're gonna color it red. It's gonna be dash, dash line. Good dash line, right? We're also let's take a ray, shoot it from the plane through the object. We're gonna color this. It's not going to be colored. We're just going to make it smaller and dotted. That's not dotted. That's dotted. There we go. Right. Um, and we don't want the label. I don't care about the label. No, I want the object. I don't want the label. There we go. So here's what we should see with uh, the, the, the round earth model. 
Uh, let's get the angle between these two lines, right? Um, so right now you can see that the object is above the horizon, right? Because we're looking down at the horizon of the Earth. Um, and we're also looking down at the object, but the object is closer. So the, the object is visibly above the horizon, right? So as we move closer, you can see that eventually at some point, at about six kilometers, the, ob the object drops below the horizon line, right? And it passes under us, right? So six kilometers, right? That's about six. As it transitions from six to five, it looks like. So what is, let's do six kilometers in nautical miles because our, our video is in nautical miles. So that's about three nautical miles away is when we should expect on a round earth, a plane a thousand feet below us to cross the horizon line, right? So let's go to traffic pass by. All right, so let's, let's just back up. Let's back up. Let's take this slowly. So here I'm taking a video of the TCAS screen. Can I make it full screen? I can. Look at that. I am professional. So we're looking at the TCAS screen, right? So this little diamond is a traffic signature. And this minus 10 means that it's 1,000 feet below us. Okay? So I'm zooming in on that. You can see, see it. And look out, you can see the light. It's kind of a bit fuzzy because my camera is auto-focusing. auto, auto -focusing, And it's hard. It, 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 it struggles to auto-focus on this light. But if you look right here, you can see that there's a light. Right? That's the air okay. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Clear as mud, right? And the reason I'm showing this video, this this happened so perfectly, right? This is right at dawn, right? We're flying towards the sunrise. And so there's a very definite horizon because the sun is behind the horizon. So it's giving us this nice clear uh, delineation of where the earth is blocking the sunlight and the earth is not blocking the sunlight. So this isn't about like, oh, the actual horizon is a lot higher. It's just that the air is getting in the way and so you can't see the line no this line is where there is ground that is opaque and where it is not opaque is because there is not ground um, so that is the horizon that is the horizon of the earth right. trying to zoom trying to focus you can see the light it's very clearly there right very clearly right. look back down trying to get it to autofocus right now it's 10 nautical miles away Right? So in fact, we're going to pause it here. We're going to pause it here. Uh, we're going to go to this and we're going to go let's do this 10 nautical miles in kilometers. So it's 18.52, right? So let's go to our thing. We're actually going to adjust this and we're going to select it to 18.52. Boo. Right? So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the object is above the horizon by a significant degree. So this is um, about two, two degrees above the horizon, right? Um, look back up, boom, about two degrees above the horizon, okay? I know it's hard to tell, but that's, that's what we're seeing, right? Whereas compare that to, let's compare that to the flat earth, right? So we're at, um, we're at 15 and a half nautical miles. Oh, never mind. Hang on. Let's, uh, I'm sorry. That's silly of me. Let's, uh, let's move the object farther away. There we go. 15 and a half nautical miles. So at 15 and a half nautical miles on the flat earth, the object should be a degree below the horizon. That is two full moons below the horizon, right? This is not two full moons below the horizon. Two full moons below the horizon would be below the horizon. This is clearly above the horizon. Like plane, of course. Boom. 
pass the horizon line. I'm going to pass the right on. It hasn't, it hasn't gained or lost altitude. It is still at a thousand feet below us, right? All right, so let's do some math, right? We're gonna do some classic word problem math, okay? We're gonna go back in time, okay? So at 22 seconds, let's take, let's take notes, okay? 22 seconds, it's 10 kilometer, not 10 kilometers, it's 10 nautical miles in front of us. Right? 22 seconds, it's 10 nautical miles in front of us. And at one minute, 59 seconds, one minute-ish, it passes directly beneath us, okay? So we can do that. Um, let's go here. Let's take another thing. So 60 seconds minus 22 is 38 seconds. So it takes 38 seconds. 10 nautical miles divided by 38 seconds. Ah, oh, excellent. I love, uh, I love when it converts it to meters per second. Um, okay, that's, that's wonderful. That's so good. Uh, can I get more? Can I get knots? Knots would be nice. No, we, we don't get knots. Um, in knots. Let's try that. Okay. 947 knots. Okay. So we know that uh, that this should cross between like at around between five and six kilometers, right? Let's go back here. Six kilometers is 3.24 nautical miles. So 10 nautical miles minus 3.24 nautical miles means 6.76 nautical miles. So let's take that divided by our number here. Nine, let's, cut, let's round up to 950 knots. 25. 0.62 seconds. So of our predictions, our predictions, based on this model, is that from the time, if we scroll back to 22 seconds, from the time, boom. Come on, there we go. From this time to the point where the plane crosses underneath the horizon, it's going to be, oh, come on, it's going to be this number of seconds plus 22 seconds is it's going to happen at around 47, 48 seconds. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if we can make a prediction that matches up. Nine. Okay, so we're a couple seconds off, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Accurate. Cool. So there we go. That's a video that, if you know what to look for, shows the curve of the Earth. Now you might not be convinced. You might be like, "Well, that's one video, right?" Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to these videos, okay? So this, this is, all right, so let's go back, let's go quickly back to what this video is. Right? This video is showing us something that is beneath us in altitude, right? But it is clearly above the horizon. This is the best video that I can see that shows that absolutely clearly. Something that's below us in altitude, but above the horizon. This should never happen on a flat Earth, right? Um, now we're going back to this video. This video, um, going to Hawaii. Okay. Going to Hawaii. So let's back up. Let's back up. Let's take this slow. Okay. 
here's our position, right? So this is our GPS position, and this is the time that we get from the GPS satellites, right? It's 3.51 Zulu time. Okay, we're at 32,000 feet. Now, this is pressure altitude. Um, and I'm gonna show GPS altitude either, it's in one of these three videos that I show GPS altitude, right? Um, <coughs> okay, you can see my beautiful iPhone that I'm recording this on, right? GPS status, altitude 34,000 feet. These are actual altitudes, 34,000 feet. I know this says 32,000 feet, but that's because this is pressure altitude. There's a difference between the two. Uh, up at altitude, up at cruising altitude, this is the altitude we always use. This is the altitude anyone cares about. Uh, the altitude at all. 34,000 feet is our actual altitude. All right, so now, <coughs> excuse me. We're looking outside the window, and we see the wonderful flat horizon of the planet, right? Perfectly flat as all the flat earthers say it is. Um, but what's this? What's this? This is this is a little bump. This is a little bump that's rising up above the flat horizon, right? Here's another one. This one was way, rising way above the flat horizon, right? This is the Okay. This is Maui. This is Maui, rising above the flat horizon. And over to the left. Big eye. Okay. Okay, right up above the flat right. Again. Anything anything lower than you in altitude on a flat earth would always appear below the horizon. Right? And that and that's just not what we see. We see and the reason that this appears above the horizon is because this is far enough away that if we go over here, let's go up our little little thing here. So we have our plane, uh, we're like a ways away, right? I don't think we're a thousand kilometers away, but we're a ways away, um, right? We're a ways away. We're looking up. So what? I mean, this is perfect, right? <laughs> We're looking up at the object, which is above the horizon, right? In fact, if we move, if we move our plane close enough that our tangent line is right at the sub-object point, uh, then this is when the uh, the angle is the greatest, because we're looking like directly at the height of the object, directly from the side, right? Um, so that's what we're that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that the object is above the horizon line. Now, if we go to the flat uh, flat Earth again, <clears throat> this just would not happen, right? But we're, we'll 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 deal with that. Well, actually, we're, we're going to model it, right? We're going to model it. That's what the purpose of these models are. But I'm not going to model it with this video because this video is not the one I want to show you. I want to show you this one. again. Position, altitude. Looking at Maui. So this is Maui. Uh, the Big Island is off to the left. It's kind of off screen. I took this video at the best point position I could because it looks to me, to my eyes, you can see the horizon here, and it looks like the top of the mountain is perfectly in line with the horizon, right? So that's what I see. Right? Top of the horizon, top of the mountain. That's all of It's hard to get the exact. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna actually do some modeling, some proper modeling. Okay, so here we have our position. So let's plot our position. Okay, uh, 22, 25.8. We're gonna need this to be in Google Earth, right? In fact, I think I've already plotted it. 22, 25. Uh, 48 minutes or 48 seconds is uh, 0.8 and then 
155.44 and a half, which is going to be 155.44.30, right? So this is our waypoint right here, okay? Which means this measurement right here, let's see if I can get this third video distance, can I get data? 197 kilometers, okay? So we are 197 kilometers away from Maui, right? So this is the top of the mountain. Uh, as best I can figure, that is the top of the mountain, right? Um, so we have 197 kilometers. So let's go to our GeoGebra file. We're going to zip this down to 197. Uh, is it 197 and a half? In fact, let's let's make it as exact as we can. 197.47. Boom. Nope, I don't want to sign in. Thank you, GeoGebra. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, now we're going to need the height of Maui. Okay. So the height of this mountain, if you look down in the bottom right, it's about 3.048 kilometers. Okay. Now, of course, I'm a smart person and I coded this wrong. So we have to do 3.048 kilometers in feet. Ten thousand feet? No. I mean, that kind of makes sense, but that's weird that it's that exact. What is the the height of Maui? Holy heck, it's 10,000 feet. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All right. 10,000 feet. Okay. And here we see that visibly, oh, uh, but we're actually up at 34,000 feet, remember. Get out of my way. I don't want you. No. 34,000 feet. Boom. Okay. So, you can see that they're, they're pretty close. It's not exact. It's pretty close, right? You are, we are 0. 0.3 degrees off. 0. 0.3, so it's less than, it's about half of the full moon. Go away. I don't need you anymore. Right, so even here, I guess what I thought this line up here was the horizon. It might be something down here. Anyway, it's pretty close. Let's look at the, the flat earth model, right? But now we get to have some fun with it because we get to actually use these lat longs as they're intended, right? So what I want to do is go back to, um, let's go back to Google Earth because I've set Google Earth to be, uh, um, completely decimalized, right? In fact, ooh, 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 I can just copy this, can't I? Oh, I can just copy this. That's amazing. Can I steal this? Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I can just copy it. Okay. All right, so we're going to do object lat. Um, latitude is the first number. Boom. Okay. Longitude is the second number. So let's delete and delete. Boom. Um, except it needs to be negative because we're in the Western Hemisphere. Boom. All right. Now let's go back to this, the plane, right? Copy that to clipboard. Oh, copy to clipboard is amazing. Plain lat. Okay. We just want the first number. Plain long. We just want the second number. But negative, because we're in the Western Hemisphere. Plain object. Does that make sense? Let's make sure that this makes sense. So Maui is 20 
0 0.709881 156, 25, 36, 40. 9881, 156, 25, 36, 40. Boom. And then the plane is a little bit more simple because we don't get as many digits. Uh, 2243, uh, 155, 74. Yes. Okay. And we also see that that kind of makes sense because we are basically due north of Maui on the map. And we're due north of Maui on this map. Okay. So zooming in here. Object height. We know the object height is 3.055. Or according to Google Maps, 3.047. So let's do 3.047. Three point oh four seven, boom, and our plane height we know is thirty four thousand feet. Okay. So once again, so this is, so that remember this red line is us looking all the way, as far as we can on the edge of the earth, right? It is it is the flat. We are looking in this case we are north of the, uh, the mountain, so we're looking all the way down to the south edge of the earth, right? So it is the horizon as defined by the flat earth. And you can see, according to the flat earth model, it's gonna be two degrees. That's four full moons below the horizon, right? I don't see this being four full moons below the horizon, right? Four full moons, the horizon would be like up here, right? Maui is not four full moons below the horizon. It is basically at the horizon. So that is the right there. You see that? That's the curve of the Earth. Okay. Maybe you're still unconvinced, right? Maybe I haven't convinced you. Okay. It's okay. Let's watch this. Let's watch this. Okay. So what we're going to see here is a sunrise. This is a time lapse I took. We're going towards California at this point into the rising sun. Okay. And you can see there's clouds, right? There's clouds over the ground. And you can see air beneath the clouds, which means that these clouds are above the horizon. Again, going back to, I mean, the horizon, the, there cannot be ground. The horizon can't secretly be up here just hidden by the air because we see daylight coming through the air, right? It's, it's not opaque. Ground is opaque. Ground doesn't let light through. We can't see the sun. The sun is below the horizon, which is another, it's, it's a can of worms. It's okay. We're not talking about that. We're looking at the clouds. Clouds are pretty. Um, we see daylight beneath the clouds. We see the sunrise light beneath the clouds, which means that underneath these clouds, there is only air, there is no land, right? In a straight line from us all the way through to space, on that side, there is no land. There's just air, right? So keep time accelerating forward. And you see, we are actually a higher altitude than these clouds. Right? We're higher altitude than these clouds. So how are we seeing underneath the clouds way back here to see sunrise light through these clouds, right? We saw sunrise light underneath these clouds and yet it turns out we're above the clouds. That's crazy. It's crazy sauce, right? So now uh, this 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 time lapse is, by the way, uh, a 60, 60 times time lapse. So it's 25 seconds long, which means that this time lapse covers 25 minutes. Actually, not 25 minutes. It's 40 minutes. Um, so every second is a minute that we're going through, right? So let's watch. Let's just sit back and watch and just think about that. Like anytime you see, actually, I'm not going to sit back and watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep 
I'm going to keep talking. Okay. Anytime you see something like this, there is daylight underneath these clouds. There's daylight and yet we are at a higher altitude, right? It gets crazy. It gets weirder. It gets weirder if you know what to look for. And right here, this is where it gets weirder. Look at this, the sun, the sun, the actual sun. And you can see that the, the, the disk of the sun, right? The sun appears to a circle like us, but it's actually cut off because the sun is rising above the horizon right now. Um, so there's the horizon. The sun is actually rising and the sun is beneath these clouds how's that possible the sun is visibly beneath these clouds and we're gonna see in just a second that these clouds are a lower altitude than us right so these these clouds are a lower altitude than us and the sun is a lower altitude than these clouds which means the sun would have to be at a lower altitude than us right like that 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 that's what that means and then the sun quickly rises, but as you see, as we're coming forward, we're scooting forward, all these clouds that the sun was beneath, we saw the sun beneath these very clouds, um, and, and they're lower altitude than us. They're just, they're just sitting down there, right? I don't know how high these clouds are, but they're, they're lower than us, okay? Now, I have, I have another video. That's how. What? How? Did it close? Why is that closed? That's weird that it was closed. All right, I have sunrise. This is the same sun, the same clouds. Look at the sunrise. Here they're off to 37,000. Here's our position. Right? Time. I have to do this video. The sun is below the clouds. That should not happen. We know from watching the other video that these clouds are a lower altitude than us. That the sun is below it. And this makes perfect sense on the This makes no sense on black. Not at all. Absolutely. And once again, this is another situation of this shows that the horizon of the Earth is not secretly way up here but just hidden by the air um because we can see the sun right like the the the, the sun clearly shows that there's no opaque object between us and this direction because otherwise it would be occluding the sun in fact it is occluding the sun you can see that the lower half of the sun and in fact if we scroll back you can actually see the sun coming up so it is occluded by the ground right here um and as it rises less and less of it is occluded that occlusion line stays put by the sunrise so you know that the horizon is not it's down it's down here and the clouds are above we're above the clouds uh, so the fact that the horizon is below these clouds indicates that that's the curve of the earth right there we're looking at the curve of the earth um and the fact that the sun is below these clouds and as these clouds are below us means that the sun is a lower altitude than us which again can't happen on a flat earth i mean it can it could if the sun was literally less than thirty-seven thousand feet above the air but i feel like if the sun was thirty-seven thousand feet above the ground people would notice, like, it would be very obvious if it was that close to the Earth. Let's continue watching this. If you want to compare the thing with this video, what it looks like, the time lapse video, just to kind of watch it that Very clearly, the horizon line blocking the sun, right? It's very obvious.
Pause. Pause. Okay. This timer. Hang on. Let's let's talk about this timer. This timer is what I was using to keep track of how long the time lapse was going. So we can actually use this timer to synchronize with the time lapse. So this is 23 minutes into the into the time lapse. So let's take a look at sunrise fast, right? So at about 23 seconds of this video, we should see the sun roughly where we saw it in the other video. Let's see if that works out, right? Just to show that I'm not being duplicitous. Two, three, right? Sun looks like that. Let's go back to the other one. Do we, do we have? No, it overwrites it. It overwrites it. Why does it overwrite it? Okay. Um, excellent. Let's go back to sun. See? Same stuff. Same stuff. Right? That shows also that I'm not lying when I say that this, that that the other time the time lapse is uh, 60 minutes. This time. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise, right? With the sun beneath the clouds, right? So now let's go back. Let's take a look at this. Whoop. Let's take a look at this. And we'll once again use our fancy little models here to see which, which is more correct, right? So first, we're going to do day and night map. Now I need to actually go onto my phone, which you can't see me doing, but I, I can promise you that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm going onto my phone and I'm looking for that video so I can figure out when it was recorded. How long is the video? That would help me find it. It's 13 seconds long. Got us up oh, two minutes and 13 seconds. Look at that. All right. That's absolutely this video. Okay. Uh, this was taken August 7th. Okay. So August 7th. Scroll forward. August 7th at 1404. Right. That's what we're looking for. August 7th, 1404. Okay. August 7th, 1404. Okay, if you want to argue the accuracy of this, you can. But if this was inaccurate, people would have noticed by now. Just gonna say that, right? Um, okay, so we have 16 degrees, 10 minutes north. Let's just go up here. 16 degrees, oh, fiddlesticks! 16 degrees, 10 minutes Put north 16 degrees 10 minutes, west uh, 2934. 29 degrees 34 minutes. Zoop. Okay, we're going to save this. I'm going to make a new project. Can I make a new project? New project. Let's create. Okay, save to project. Excellent. So we have 16, 16666.7. Let's put that in here. So object north is long latitude. Basic. Okay. So we're going to be 16.146 is in the 7. 16.112347. Boom. Okay. I'm going to zoom out to our map to make sure that things are making sense. All right. And we're 29.546 uh, is in a 7. 
and that's west. So that's going to be negative 29.46s and a 7. Okay? So that's the sun right there. Okay? Our airplane, north 2841.0. North, 28 degrees, 41.0 minutes. West, 133.00.8, 133 degrees. It's doing the thing again. It's doing the thing again where I can't actually type. Why can't I type? I despise things sometimes. All right, so we still have the sun, the sun point. Okay, 2841, 33008. North, 28 degrees. 30... North, north. I absolutely despise Google Earth sometimes. Go away. I don't want you. God damn it. Are you, okay, you do exist. Good. Why why are why are you askew? Why is why is everything? How come I can't type? Why can't I type? What is happening? Twenty eight forty one. I'm feeling lucky. Yes, that's what I want. I want, I'm feeling lucky, Google Earth. That's, I hate, I hate life. I hate technology. 28. I type, in, I type a single letter, and it just prevents me from typing anything after that. Why would I want a local In-N-Out burger? What are you... Jesus Christos on an actual pogo stick. That was pulling teeth. Okay. It's okay. Who's Fraba? All right. We're going to take a measurement. We're going to take a measurement. From that point. Over to this point. It's okay. Everything's okay. All right, done. Let's save that to the project, why don't we? Okay. 10,420 kilometers. Let's just, let's just add that. Let's just add that. Happy a little. 10,000, what was it? 10,420. 420 kilometers. Okay. Boom. All right, we don't want this one anymore. Let's just delete it. Let's just delete it. It's fine. It's fine. We can keep that one. Okay. We're gonna do another thing. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a line. We're gonna do a ray. Actually, we're gonna do. We're gonna do a tangent line. Yeah, I like tangent lines. Where's tangent? You'd think after using this app so much, I would know how to use it. But that is not the case. We're gonna get a nice tangent line going. We're gonna hide this one. We don't want this one anymore. Go away. Okay. Let's take this one. Let's make it pretty. Let's take it. Let's make it pretty. Let's make it pretty. Boom. Horizon line get, right? All right, now we're gonna do another tangent. It's gonna be a little awkward. Um, but 
Where's tangent? I just had it. I just had it. Okay. Plane. Do be do 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 do. Do be do do do. Scrolling all the way out. Sun. Boom. Look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, we're going to actually color these. We're going to color these orange. It's going to be the same color as the sun. It's not going to be the same color as the sun. It's going to be orange. Let's make it. Let's make it. Let's make it Morse code. Orange, Morse code. Boom. Okay. Zoom in, and we see it's actually, let's do something fun, okay? We're going to do, we're going to do something fun. What are we doing? I'm going to do a ray. That ray already exists. I'm silly. Um... Boom. That ray already exists. Look at that. A ray from the center of the Earth through the sun. Right? So now we're going to make a tangent line. I love my tangent lines. Let's do a tangent line. Tangents. Subplane, sun. This is going to be the one tangent because the subplane is right on the, 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 the Earth. Right? Um, and we're going to do a parallel line. So we're going to take... Nope. Let's try that again. Let's try a parallel line. Right? Let's take that line. Nope. Alright, stuff is happening that I don't like. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete that. Okay, let's try this again. Parallel line. I want parallel line of Q up through plane. Right? So this line right here is what the actual let's get rid of this. I don't want this. Right? So this line, which I'm going to color green, because we haven't used a green yet. Let's do the dark green. And we'll make it semi-dashed. So this line is the actual horizontal of our plane, right? And you can see that the sun and the horizon are significantly below that, right? It is below that. Okay? So going back to this, going back to this, and remember, if we zoom in, these clouds are below our altitude. So our level is actually up here, right? In fact, we can we we can we can figure out what our level is. Let's do a quick uh, let's do a quick angle measurement, right? Do a quick angle measurement from there to the top of the sun. Okay, and we can see we're about three and a half degrees away. So we're three and a half degrees um, which is seven suns, right? In fact, yeah, we're seven suns. So you can see that at least according to the, the, the ground earth, our horizon, our vanishing point is actually up here, right? Which makes sense for us, because again, you can see the sun is below the clouds. And the clouds, we can see the sky below the clouds. Anyway, I'm repeating myself, right? Let's go to the, let's go to the, let's go to the round earth model. Um, with a flat earth model. So we have, uh, we have the sun set to where it needs to be. Right? So now let's come back over here figure out where our plane needs to be. Okay? 26, 6, 8 quadruple threes. 28, 6, 8 quadruple threes. Right? Plane latitude is 28.68 quadruple three. 
Uh, longitude is 133.01 quadruple 3. Going to be negative 33.01123. Okay. So once again, plane, subsolar point, right? Airplane, subsolar point. Okay. So now, in order to get the situation that we see here, right? So what we see here is that. So we know that these clouds are below us in altitude, right? We know that because we have seen ourselves flying over top of them. These clouds are below us in altitude, which means that our horizon, our vanishing point, is going to be somewhere above these clouds, right? And we can see that the clouds, the top of the clouds, are about at least a full solar degree or a solar uh, disk above the sun right so it's at least half a degree difference between the two so let's try to figure let's try to figure out what we need what height we need the sun for the sun let's see how high are we what is our current plane altitude right 37,000 feet Oh, fiddlesticks. Fine. Be that way. There's 7,000 feet. 37,000 feet. Boom. All right. How high does the sun need to be in order for this angle to be a half a degree? Well, if it's too high, all right, so let's, let's make this, let's make the increment or the maximum be 10,000 kilometers, right? 10,000 kilometers. So I think common flat Earth models put it around 5,000 kilometers up, right? Which is significantly above the horizon, as you can see here. But as you can see here in this video, it's a half a degree, at least a half a degree below the horizon. So how low does we need to be for this to be a half a degree below the horizon? And the answer is, the answer is, it never is a half a degree below the horizon. It never is. It can be exactly on the ground. And guess what? If it's exactly on the ground, that's at the horizon because that's how we've defined the horizon, right? The horizon is where the Earth, where we see the Earth disappear. Let's 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 make the increment 0 0.001, right? We're going to move it up in single meters at a time. Can we do that? Okay. Oh, oh, we're getting we have we have actual we have things. Can we get can we get a real thing? Angle? No. Angle is just question mark most of the time. Can I get rid of this? Yes, okay. So angle is just question mark. We just we just don't have it. There we go. We have at 32 meters. It is the sun is literally 32 meters above the ground. That is lower than most buildings, right? Even then, it is below the horizon. Yes, but it's 0 0.03 degrees below the horizon, not 0 0.5 degrees below the horizon. What we're seeing right here is the sun being at least 0 0.5 degrees below the horizon. So we, we know for a fact that this video was not taken on a flat earth because this video, this view right here, this view of the sun <laughs> below the clouds at this altitude, this view is impossible on a flat earth. And this is the curve. This is the curve of the earth. You are looking at the curve of the earth right and honestly you, you can do this measurement anytime you see this view right here at any altitude because if the sun is bisected by the horizon then no altitude that you can get it 
will give you that answer. At least not a reasonable altitude, right? So, like, as we said, when it's 32 degrees, when it's 32 meters. But even again, like, a bisection is going to be a quarter of a degree. This isn't even a quarter of a degree. So this is, yeah. Anyway, this, this view is just impossible on a flat Earth. Um, and here it is. This is this is just this is just a view I had. So yeah, like I said, uh, we see we see the curve of the Earth all the time. Ooh, one more, one more, one more beautiful footage. This this is the footage. Of the All right, so here I'm going to explain what we're looking at. I'm going to explain what we're looking at. I'm looking down at these clouds, and you can see these clouds are not directly lit by the sun, right? They are in shadow. The sun is right there. And you can see none of these clouds are directly lit by the sun. They are all in shadow. All of these clouds, they're all in shadow. None of them. This is the iPad that is currently taking a time lapse, and I'm going to show you the time. Lapse. It's taking this is the this is the trope of taking a video of the thing taking the video, right? Showing that these video clips are in fact okay. Boom. Boom. Some of the clouds are directly lit by the sun. You can see it, right? You can see the bright light on the clouds. But these ones back here, they're not lit by the sun. The ones up here are lit by the sun, right? We are lit by the sun. We have been lit by the sun for several minutes now. But these clouds haven't been, right? So now let's, let's watch the time-lapse footage, right? So this is the time-lapse footage. This is the iPad. So I put my fingers up, put my fingers up to show that me, we are directly lit by the sun. The clouds are not directly lit by the sun, right? Okay, you can see the clouds that are directly lit by the sun. In fact, as we watch, so it's kind of hard to see right but if you watch some of these clouds right here you can watch them start to get lit by the sun as we go closer to them right it's so like that one right there all right let's back up a little bit right that cloud is in shade the sun is 
clipping its top it is getting more and more illuminated as time goes on, right? And then we turn and it kind of messes everything up. So I stopped the recording. So this situation where we are directly lit by the sun, but the things on the ground are not being directly lit by the sun, again, makes perfect sense when you're talking about a flat earth, right? So let's get rid of let's get rid of most of the stuff. We don't need we don't need most of this. When we're talking about a round earth, I'm sorry. All right. In fact, we don't need this either. Let's get rid of that. Okay. What we do need, um, what we do need is a tangent line. Those are my favorite. Okay. We're gonna take. In fact, let's take the tangent of the Earth and the Sun. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be amazing. Goodness gracious, I have to scroll out a long ways. There we go. All right. Beautiful tangent lines. Love me some tangent lines. Okay. We don't need this line anymore. Let's get rid of that line. Okay. So here we have the tangent lines, right? So this tangent line means um, anything above this line is being lit by the sun. Anything below the line is in shadow, right? So you can see if we come over here, um, there, there's where the tangent line hits, right? So you can see when we're flying up here at 34,000 feet, I think we're at 33,000 feet in this video. So let's change this to 33. Okay, we're at 33,000 feet. All right, now I'm just gonna start decreasing the distance, right? Zoop, so you can see us, we enter the sunlight right? We enter the sunlight. Look at us in the sunlight. But the stuff that we're looking on down here, it's not in the sunlight. It's in the shade, right? And as we keep flying forward, more and more of it becomes in the sunlight as it gets closer and closer to these light, to the light of the sun. And eventually, when you pass into it, now suddenly everything is in direct sunlight, right? Including us. See? See, this makes perfect sense on a round earth. Right? Now, if we go to a flat Earth, we can't even model this because necessarily because we don't even know where the sun is. But let's say the sun is, like I said, the, the standard is around 5,000 kilometers, I'm pretty sure, right? Now, where, how far, how far, let's, 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 let's do this, let's do this, let's do this reasonably, okay? We're gonna put, we're gonna put the sun over here. Um, Let's put the sun on the equator do, ba, do, 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 do. over there and we are going to be on the other side right okay so here's the sun all right and here's us on the airplane we're going to be at we're going to be at 33,000 feet right all right now where, where can we put the airplane, right? Where can we put the airplane that the airplane is going to be in sunlight, right? The airplane is in sunlight, but the ground immediately beneath the airplane. In fact, we're looking at the ground like out here, right? We're looking at the ground in front of us. Where can we be? that the airplane is in direct sunlight, but the ground is not in direct sunlight, right? And no matter where you put the airplane, even if we put the airplane on the exact opposite end of the earth from the sun, right? We're gonna put it all the way on the edge of the earth. It still doesn't make a lick of sense that we could be in the sunlight 
and the ground wouldn't be, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that's how, that's how this picture, this picture right here, shows the curve of the Earth, right? These clouds are in the shadow of the Earth that we are not in because we are above the lump of the curve of the Earth. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I hope you have a good day. Take care.